Welcome to this um, video on uh, the Scale Agile framework. Short introduction. Of course, there's, there's a lot more to the uh, Scale Agile framework than uh, will fit into this, this short uh, drawing video. So uh, please go have a look on the uh, scaleagileframework.com website. Highly recommend you go there, have a look. It's all out in the, um, it's all out in the open, freely revealed. Uh, you can find everything, all the guidance, uh, cases, etc. Uh, go have a look. Well, let's get going. To start off, um, at the top, we have big headquarters, you know, the, the, the head of the concern, the, the enterprise. That's where you sit and make uh, big uh, strategic thoughts and decisions. And uh, of course, what you'd like is for those decisions to be executed. And that's really, uh, that's what SAFE is about how to connect strategy and, uh, and execution. Now, up in the enterprise, big thoughts. And um, so what comes out of that, you could say, uh, that would be what we call in SAFE strategic themes. So what, what do we want to do with our products? How, would, how do we want to position them? Uh, where do we want to move forward? Where do we want to, you know, what, what is the competition doing? Uh, are we trying to go into some new markets? Uh, are we trying to, to meet some new, uh, new demands? What's happening in the, in the world, right? Uh, and based on these strategic themes and where would you be, you have, a, you have a total spend. How much are you going to spend on R&D or product development or whatever you call it? Now, when you allocate that spend and we're up on the portfolio level now, right? You would, you would want to not start off and, um, and allocate it to different projects. Um, that's, uh, that's a pretty wasteful way of doing it if, if it's the same people anyway working on the same kind of stuff. And every time you're, you're uh, doing something, you, you have to start up a project. So you want to uh, allocate this, uh, these resources to value streams. Right? So you invest in value streams. And value stream, that could be... For instance, uh, uh, we have examples of, uh, of customers who are uh, building products that they're selling to, uh, to their customers. Well, then the, the value stream would be a product or a product line, uh, and you would have a, a program servicing uh, that value stream. Uh, for internal, if you're a big uh, financial institution, for instance, value stream can, can look different. It could be an internal value stream supporting a um, uh, a value stream that actually goes out to the customers. Uh, so supporting your internet bank. So what you do when you've allocated a spend, and most of that spend is going to be FTEs, um, uh, meaning people's uh, wages. So hundreds of people uh, who are needed uh, to, to, to develop new stuff for this, uh, this value stream. Uh, that spend goes to fund an agile release train. And the agile release train we could also call it a program. We are now on the, we've left the portfolio level, we're down on the program level. Uh, we call it an agile release train in, in SAFE. Uh, it sounds cooler, <laughs> that's certainly one reason. But also, if you're, uh, if you're doing a transition, if you're going to work in a new way, new words can actually help. So this agile release train, it um, serves a value stream and it, it delivers a solution. You could also call it a product, but we like to call it a solution. Uh, it's, it may be more than a product, but a solution to a customer who is using it, internal or, or external. It's value stream, so it's cross-functional, and the release chain actually, uh, that means all the people needed to go from, hey, that's a great idea, to now the customer can use this in their solution. All those people, so you, you may have a lot of engineers, software developers and whatnot, uh, testers, but also business people. And the thing about the Agile release train or the art is that it never stops. It's not a project that, you, that, you, uh, that is temporary. Uh, it never stops. Well, it stops, of course, the day you say, we're not going to have this solution anymore. We're not going to have this product uh, on the market. But um, until then, it's ongoing, not temporary. And on the program level, you also have, uh, of course, a vision, um, really important for the context. And you have a roadmap. And the roadmap would be uh, three to five quarters, something like that, uh, out into the future. What do we think? What features are we gonna? What features are we gonna uh, deliver to our customers? And you have uh, on the program level, you're also looking at metrics like uh, 
how much are you able to deliver, uh, how, how happy are the people working here, uh, metrics that, uh, that are important to you. Uh, and not least, of course, the, uh, the flow, how fast, can we, um, how fast can we deliver something. So this is all uh, on, the, uh, on the program level. And of course, also on the program level, you have a backlog. Yeah, you have a backlog. Backlog of, uh, of work or um, features. This backlog uh, exists in a uh, Kanban system. So the backlog isn't everything waiting to be, to be done. You want to you wanna build up a, a Kanban system for this because what you want to focus on is, of course, the flow. And uh, no one's happy having a, a big, long queue of things. So uh, I've done a super simple uh, uh, Kanban here with a funnel, uh, review stage, backlog, development, and done. You will probably have more steps than this. You could have a review and analysis. Uh, you could build a business case. Uh, you could also do that on a portfolio level. After you develop something, you could have, a, you could have a, a validate stage. But the important thing is to focus on the flow and to have a pull system, right? Not push. Pushing more work into a, <laughs> a delivery organization isn't necessarily going to mean that you have more work coming out in the other end. Often it's uh, quite a difference. So what you want to do is you want to uh, limit whip, work in progress. Limit whip. Um, you can have as many ideas in your funnel as you, as you want, but you limit whip for the other. You don't have uh, tons of stuff lying around kicking in your backlog. They cost a lot of resources. So you, you're focusing on the, um, on the pull, and whenever you're done delivering, uh, developing something, well, that uh, makes it you have room for, uh, for some new work. Now, how do we actually get work done here? Well, the teams pull work from the backlog. And the teams, well, the number of teams you have, an agile release train, you know, the, um, somewhere in between 50 and 125 people. Uh, could be fewer, but, uh, you know, often uh, for, it to order to, for it to make sense, you're, you'll have about 50 people. And it, it all adds up. Because, as I said, it's not only the developers. Now, you have a, a common planning session, crucial in, uh, in SAFE and for it to work. A common planning session, meaning all the people together in, in one room. And that's why we also call it big room planning. Uh, and that's actually, um, this builds on, on scrums. So you, you, see, you see your uh, timeline developed into sprints and a two-week sprint. Uh, and, and for every big iteration, you have, uh, you have a sprint called... Um, iteration and uh, planning. The teams are using uh, Scrum or Kanban, as you wish, and they are now, they pull the features into their backlog, features and enablers, I get back to the enablers, and they're now looking for the, uh, into the next program increment, the program increment, that's, uh, that's uh, basically a, a stage in your program or a tranche, whatever you call it. Typically, uh, quarters are working uh, really well. Uh, the recommendation is safe is um, 10 weeks, but um, quarters are, are good. So now during the planning, the, these three teams that we have in our example, they are um, planning out when they're going to de deliver features. You could also look at user stories here, uh, depending how big your features are. Um, how big are your features? Well, they're too big. Hey, someone planned a feature in the last sprint. You don't do that. That's a no-no. The last sprint is for planning and improvement uh, and also uh, can act as a buffer. And now the important thing and the good thing about SAFE is to have the common picture and see how are we dependent, we as a team, dependent on the other teams. So you have a, a dependency map. Um, and uh, the magic here is going to happen when you do it together uh, and you do it this uh, visually. That's when you have, uh, that, that's when you really have a, a benefit of it. So we're working in uh, in a cadence. We're working in time boxes. We have the uh, the the low level Scrum time boxes of uh, two week sprints, and the whole team of team they also sp uh, work in a time box. They 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 sprint in program sprints or program increments, and that's a three month uh, time box in this case uh, quarters, as I was saying. So you develop on a cadence. Now up on the uh, program level, you have. Uh, Demos, of course, each team is working uh, in sprints. Of 
course, each team is uh, working in sprints and um, and demoing for their their product owner. But you also do system demos where, where it all fits together. Very important. And you're releasing. We develop on a cadence and we release on demand. DevOps uh, can also lie up in the program area. Uh, and of course, uh, release on demand for many is going to be as, as soon as possible, as fast as we can. But not always the case. Sometimes you want to wait for a market event or something like that before you, uh, before you release. So we, we have customers doing that. Important thing about the teams is that, is that they are featured teams, uh, cross-functional teams. But basically, we, we close call them scrum teams. Uh, and that's on the team level. So let's, uh, let's divide those up. And now we have three levels of SAFE. SAFE has a fourth level as well in between the portfolio and program uh, called Value Stream. But I'm not going to go into that now. Now, people, uh, on the program level, you have a, well, a program management team. Shall we call it that? But you have the, the trinity of responsibilities here. A, a release train engineer, which is a sort of a program manager. Uh, you have a... Uh, product management, which is uh, sort of a business owner for the um, for the program and the release train, and you have a solution architect with the overall responsibility for um, architecture and um, technical practices and and those kind of things. Just as on the team level, you have the same trinity. If you have a scrum master, a product owner, and the development team taking responsibility for the architecture there. So we have these trinities. We also have it on the portfolio level, although I'm not getting into that one right just now. Now, another important thing that you would have to look after on the program level, uh, the architectural runway. Now, we, the teams are building features, but they're also building enablers. And the enablers, that's what's going to enable us to build new features in the, in the future. Uh, one one uh, pitfall of... Uh, it, when you have agile teams that are not that coordinated, is that no one really builds uh, the right enablements for, for the future. When you've done an increment, you all meet for the next big room planning session and uh, improve and adapt. And then you do it all again. And, and here you sprint as a team of teams. That's safe, drawn and explained in uh, under 15 minutes. I hope uh, you learned something and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.